In this week's episode, I'll be joining the riders of the Petronas Hongleong Yamaha for a gym session. And in our Through the Chicane segment, watch Ramdan Rosli battle it out right here at the Sepang International Circuit. I'm at the Sepang International Circuit for Ramdan Rosli's wildcard debut in the Moto3 class of the Malaysian MotoGP Championship. I'm Julie Woon and this is Motorsports at Petronas. There's definitely the adrenaline rush when taking a corner at high speed or going full throttle at 250 km per hour on a straight line. Now, a normal resting heart rate is around 70 beats per minute, while a rider's heart rate during a race ticks at over 190 BPM. Now, that's way off the charts. However, you have to tune your body and your mind to not break when facing adversities. And the only way to do that is through body and mind strength. And the boys from Team Petronas Hongleong Yamaha is going to show me just that. The Asia Road Racing Championship is a favourite battleground among Asian riders. Riders from the WSBK have also gone head-to-head -head at this six-round championship. Remarkably, with the participation of world standard riders, they have automatically upped the fitness and skill levels of all riders in the Asia Road Racing Championship. Petronas Hongleong Yamaha is represented by five very skilled riders. Leading the pack for the super sports category is well-known and well-respected rider Ahmad Fuad Baharudin, Japan's Yuki Ito and rookie Mohamed Afif Amran. As for the underbone category, we have our very own Malaysian Cup Pre veterans Mohamed Effendi Rosli and Ahmad Fazli Sham. Now, this is definitely a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to train with Asia's best. So let's see whether it's difficult to train and talk at the same time. Here goes. Fuad, it's so nice to see you again after so long. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you are the most experienced and senior rider of the team. And so obviously, you have even raced with some of the best riders in the world. And I'm sure a lot of people have approached you to ask for advice before. Am I right? What kind of advice have they been asking? Uh, macam saya dah berlumba selama 17 tahun dan rata-ratanya banyak pelumba yang datang jumpa dengan saya tanyakan pendapat, uh, skill dari segi skill atau technical track dan sebagainya. Okay. Setengah rider tu dia akan confuse pada gearing di setiap track dan dia akan bertanya kepada saya dari segi breaking point, uh, start daripada throttle control, daripada mana, uh, chain direction dan sebagainya. Dan uh, boleh dikatakan uh, banyak pelumba-pelumba baru ni dia agak kurang sedikit dan kurang pengalaman. Dan uh, saya lebih suka pelumba-pelumba baru ni lebih bertanya kepada saya supaya dia dia lebih cepat matang dan automatically uh, sukan bermotor di Malaysia ni akan lebih cepat naik lah berbanding okay. di Spain, di Europe sana. And now in the ARRC, I mean there's a whole new level. The riders are all from all over the world. They're international riders. So obviously you have to up your game in terms of fitness. So what kind of exercises do you do? Uh, setiap tahun, uh, fitness kita kena lebih lebih tambah, lebih tambah, lebih tinggi sebab uh, kalau nak ikutkan daripada tahun 2001 sehingga 2014, uh, Kebanyakan rider daripada luar, semua banyak daripada Japan, uh, sekarang Australia dan macam-macam lagi daripada luar lah yang standard level uh, very high. I see. So you akan recommend exercise macam mana untuk prepare? Okay, macam saya saya uh, biasanya seminggu tiga kali uh, exercise uh, 
setiap petang saya akan jog dan pagi saya akan lebih uh, pada gym lah untuk tingkatkan lagi stamina. I see. Okay, with all of your experience racing after all these years, I mean, what kind of advice would you give all the budding riders who want to be just like you? Okay, uh, saya nak nasihatkan uh, advice kepada yang plumba-plumba baru nak start. <coughs> Kalau nak jadi rider yang yang bagus, yang konsisten, haruslah disiplin, uh, 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 disiplin dan dengar cakap. Uh, apa pada siapa yang membawa dia masuk dalam racing dan cuba sedaya upaya kuatkan hati untuk 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 Bloomberg. Well all the best to you. Terima okay. kasih Fuad. Sama. Nice to see you again. Okay. <laughs> All right, Effendi, sorry to disturb you. you. Please go on working. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. All right, so you race in the underbone category in the ARC, the Asia Road Racing Championship, right? Yeah. And that means you get to travel a lot and to experience different circuits around the world. So my question is, which is your favorite circuit and why? Of course, lah, Japan. Japan, why? <laughs> Japan. Yang mana? Autopolis, uh, ada... Autopolis, Suzuka, track yang berada dekat Jepun memang saya sangat meminati. Uh, sebab salah satu dia, saya memang tak pernah kecewa di sana. Sebab saya suka skirt ni kerana skirt dia teknikal. Dua permukaan uh, jalan dia yang agak grip. Walaupun hujan sekalipun, kita boleh masih lagi boleh ride seperti jalan yang kering. Eh. So, track dia lebih kepada safety berbeza dengan track-track di negara lain. I mean, ARRC is a whole new ball game. You get to compete with international riders. So that means you have to up your game in terms of fitness and you say you like endurance. What kind of exercise in the gym do you focus on? First, kalau untuk sukan yang saya ceburi pembuat motor ni, dia lebih kepada tangan. Dan, so you kena exercise tangan? Ya, yeah, exercise tangan, kaki dan juga body position. So kita lebih kepada agak kena lembut sebab kita selalu Right, this right. <laughs> tak boleh keras. So okay. kita perlu buat benda lah tu. Uh, saya rasa yang paling penting pun kaki tangan dan bagian chest dan perut lah. That means overall lah. You kena overall, overall. juga. Overall. The back juga, <laughs> the neck yeah, juga. Yeah. <laughs> dia renang lah, renang, renang. Biasa kami akan lebih kepada renang. Oh, okay. Sebab dia bergerakkan untuk semua. Hmm. And tak ada pressure atas kaki semua kan? Tak ada. Oh, okay. So thank you so much. I'm going to leave you back um, with your cycling, okay? Tambah lagi tiga jam, okay? <laughs> thank you. Hi. Afif, welcome back to the show after Sunway Lagoon. Okay, so just a couple more questions we want to know about you. This is your first year in the Super Sport category, and uh, how do you like it so far? How's it been? Category Super Sport ni agak uh, mencabar lah dan. Saya suka dengan cabaran dan dari pelumba-pelumba luar dan di situ saya belajar juga di mana saya perlu tingkatkan lagi dari segi teknik riding saya. And ARC is a whole new level. You are competing with international riders from all over the world and I assume that your fitness also has to be at the top of the game. So what kind of exercise do you concentrate on? Pelumbang di erasi ini sangat mencabar dan lebih profesional orang cakap. Hmm. Dan dari segi fitness pula, kita perlu upgrade lebih banyak lagi. Dan satu minggu saya buat fitness tiga kali sehari. Tiga kali sehari? Tiga kali Bukan sehari. seminggu? Seminggu seminggu penuh. Wow! Okay, pagi saya jogging, tengah hari saya main gym lah. dan pada di waktu malam saya ada aktiviti berenang sedikit. Wow, wonder so fit. Okay, and how about when you are travelling? How's your fitness regime like? Selalunya kita pergi uh, travel keluar tiga hari awal sebelum race kita nak sesuaikan diri dengan cuaca, uh, waktu dan di situ boleh saya juga mengambil langkah untuk Jogging sedikit untuk menyesuaikan diri dalam keadaan di luar sana. Hmm, 
kasih. The exercise doesn't stop there. All the best. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. You can continue with your exercise. Jumpa lagi. Okay. Fazli, hi, nice to meet you. First time, huh? Nice to meet you. So, I'm curious to find out more about you and I'm sure all your fans out there also would like to know more. Why Underbone, not Supersport or any other category? Sebenarnya, saya telah mencuba kategori yang uh, Supersport pada tahun 2012. Uh, tapi, agak agak kurang merasangkan. Jadi, lebih sesuai kepada Underbone racing yang saya rasa. Let's talk about exercise since we're in the gym, okay? ARRC is a whole new level. You're competing with international riders. So your fitness also has to be at the top of its game. So what kind of exercises do you concentrate on mostly? Okay, uh, untuk saya, exercise yang saya rutin saya buat itu terus apabila bangun pagi, saya hari-hari saya stretching, uh, pumping dan, dan tu perlu. Dan kadang-kadang uh, dua minggu, uh, seminggu dua kali itu saya akan pergi jogging untuk dapatkan uh, pernafasan yang baik yang betul. I see. How about your diet? Ada diet ke tak? Uh, tak ada diet. Uh, tak ada diet. In Malaysia susah nak diet lah. Nasi demar, orang tercana. How to how to give up kan? Uh, sebab saya makan apa pun tak naik. Jadi <laughs> tak perlu diet. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. All the best. Harap kita boleh jumpa lagi. Yeah. Unfortunately, Yuki Ito was not able to be with us in this session, but guest host Nadia Evers managed to catch up with him when he was in town. Hi Yuki, so good to see you again. Nice to meet you. Well, I know you're busy and you're going to start your race at what, 3 o'clock? That's soon. But I'm going to ask you a few questions first. Okay. So what did you do during your off-season? Testing whole tire. Hmm. Tire testing or Dunlop and... Uh, so not much rest for you? No holiday? No holiday. No, no, no holiday. <laughs> every, oh. every time was so training. Hmm. Necessary. Yeah. So in the ARC, you've raced in many different circuits. Do you have a favorite? Uh, of course, in Japan circuit, in Suzuka, I like it because... Uh, so many, many, many uh, high-speed corner and uh, I like it. So you were a wild card in the Moto2 category in the MotoGP. Do, does, do you think that gives you an added advantage for this race? I think yes, because, uh, because uh, if uh, before my level, so very, I think we low, mm -hmm. low, but now is uh, bet, better, better, than, better. <laughs> better than before. So maybe <laughs> can battle. So now, so, yeah, of yeah. course. I stronger than before, mm -hmm. so. And with all your training, yeah, you're just yeah. gonna get stronger and stronger. Yes, Good yes. things for you might happen. Yes. So I know you got to get back to your training. You have a race not long from now. Mm -hmm. I wish you all the best, and thank you so much for sharing your time. Thank you. Thank you. It's truly an honor getting to know the men of team Petronas Hong Leong Yamaha. As you can see, the battle is not only on track but off track as well in terms of their physical and mental preparation. And now it's time for me to head home and mend my aching muscles. Wildcard entries add to the excitement of Grand Prix racing. This year, Ramdan Rosli is given that honour to compete in front of his home crowd on a wildcard ticket in the Moto3 class. He will be taking the infamous first corner with the international elite, including Malaysia's Zulfahmi Khairuddin and Hafik Azmi. 18-year-old Ramdan Rosli is currently competing in Spain's FIM CEV Repsol Championship. Having had his first taste of two-wheel thrill on a pocket bike, Ramdan has made his mark in the Petronas AAM Malaysian Cup Prix Championship and later competed on a 600cc bike at the Asia Road Racing Championship. He is also the first Malaysian to win at the two high Superbike Series at a tender age of 17. Not one to rest on his laurels, when opportunity came knocking to compete with Europe's up-and-coming riders, Ramdan packed his bags and moved to Spain. Donning the Petronas AHM Malaysia colours, Klangborn Ramdan Rosli will definitely be out to make his mark at his Grand Prix debut. Having been picked as Malaysia's wildcard entry, Ramdan has only got a small window of opportunity to test the bike that he'll be competing in. 
Not only that, there are also media engagements to attend. Uh -huh. I bet you thought it was easy becoming a writer. Well, I caught up with Ramdan and one of his media engagements in Kuala Lumpur to ask what are his thoughts on his big debut. How are you doing today? Yeah, good. Yeah, you good. You're feeling good that today is all about you. You're the star. I mean, you're on the bunting. I'm wearing your shirt. How are you feeling right now? I'm uh, feeling good because I enjoy for this. Uh, our <laughs> program in this in San Vila Lagoon. I really enjoy it because this is our second time in this, this uh, San Vila Lagoon. <laughs> I enjoy it. Have you had the chance to go around San Vila Lagoon and play all the rides? No, no play. No play. No play all work. Yeah, yeah. Only some, some yeah, like uh, screen park and only, only oh. one. That's good. Scary, yeah. I've never been there. <laughs> so, but it's nice to see you here. and. I've been watching the evolution of your career for a while now, you know, from Cup Prix to ARC and to the Spanish Championship. Yeah. Do you think you are this much closer to the, your ultimate dream? Yeah, from the start, uh, my my career is from the mini bike and also from the Cup Prix and so in, in the Asia. Always, uh, I think from I start from the uh, from the early, I always put. Like my for the, my career is here in the uh, MotoGP, but uh, I think if I do more more hard working, maybe I can race in this MotoGP. But I still work because I try to arrive in this. this. I see. So tell us a bit about your bike that you'll be using for the Malaysian Grand Prix in Sepang. Are you going to be using the same number as well? Yes, the same number and also the same bike that I use in the Spanish Championship. Mm-hmm. And you're comfortable with that? Yes, uh, so far we, we have a test uh, before this uh, this weekend. So for me, uh, I have a lit, like a... Uh, good feel? Yeah, good feel for the, this weekend. Got feeling and, you're uh, going to win this. Yeah. Mm. And it must be a huge honour to be picked as the wildcard entry. But do you feel there's added pressure performing and riding, competing in front of home crowd? Yeah, for me, this is my first time. Uh, I have a wildcard program, so for me, I really enjoy and I started to start it. And for this weekend, uh, for me, race in the home, home race is a little bit uh, pressure for me because uh, all everybody come to see and me, but I always think for the positive weekend to do more better, better and try to get some uh, good result for this weekend. Mm. But do you feel that you have an added advantage over the other riders because you know the track in Sepang so well? Uh, for me, it's the same because uh, for this year, I only ride uh, first time in the last week because uh, I don't have any time to ride in the Sepang uh, because we have a race and training in Spain. So for me, uh, I don't have any advantage only for the spectators or for the Nation Grand Prix. For me, it's an uh, advantage because uh, all my supporters come and see me, so I have a good feeling for the, this, this weekend. I see, so that's the added advantage, your fans and family yeah, and yeah. friends are there. That's great as well. But on the other hand, do you think that all the other riders in the Moto3 um, calendar has a huge advantage or maybe a slight advantage because they had the whole season to get used to their bike? MotoGP and CEB Spanish Championship is a big difference because uh, MotoGP Championship is because he have a lot of race compared with me because I have only eight eight race and also for MotoGP it have uh, eighteen I think eighteen race and maybe he uh, have a more feeling good feeling than me because I only have uh, only eight race and but for me it's same because use the same bike only. I need to work and practice many times to get the best feeling for this, this bike. Mm, okay, and you mentioned earlier on you are competing in the Spanish Championship, also in Moto3. Do you think that it's going to be any different um, competing in Moto3 at ultimately Two Wheel Racing's Premier Championship? Uh, for me, it's uh, not a big difference because the, the bike, also the shape of the bike also, uh, is the same, only maybe some uh, part of the engine, also uh, some like clutch and then the gears, but for me, it's maybe the same because the other side also have the same factory bike, also from the other team. For me, 
it's a not a big difference between the CEV Spanish Championship than uh, Moto3 World Championship. So you've been in Spain for a while now. I'm sure you're having a ball of a time. Um, do you think your exposure riding in Spain in CV Repsol has helped prepare you for this day? Yeah, for sure. Because uh, in Spain, I training a lot, and also like my fitness, and also riding a bike, training a slide, also helped me to perform this weekend. So I hope I can use uh, my experience race in Europe to use in this weekend in Spain. Okay, well done. Okay, last question before I let you off the hook. This season, Moto3, what will be your strategy? Uh, my strategy is to finish the race in the uh, good, time. good, good condition, <laughs> and, and also to have. I target to earn some point, and also uh, if I earn some point, maybe it's a bonus for my team, and so for me because uh, you know the World Championship is not easy to to get a race and also to get the best result because the other side also come from the good good team, good good rider and also many lot of experience they have and also very good feeling and I hope I can get the point and also can make some nation to proud of me. I'm sure they're proud of you regardless. I think you have what it takes to be on the podium. All the best, good luck. Thank you. Don't forget to log on to www.petmaster.com.my if you want to know more about your favourite teams, riders and race results. Going full throttle at 250 km per hour on a straight line. While a rider's ticks at over 190 BPM during a race. And <laughs> hey, we're going to start break dancing, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wildcard entries and to the excitement. <laughs>